Hello and welcome to episode 122 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is December 13th, 2021. <laughs> Almost forgot what day it is today. Anyway, today I'm wearing rather cuddly uh, things with lots of mohair. Um, the shawl I'm wearing is a triangular shawl and it's a German pattern called Musternixe, which is sort of a wordplay on must, uh, pattern mix. And um, it's a, a color gradient ball of yarn that I used. It has very subtle uh, change from blue to um, lilac through to almost black. So it's not very visible. Um, if I hold the beginning and the end together, you can see there is a change. And part of the reason you can't really see the um, the color change is because I held it double with a strand of mohair silk in dark blue. And that sort of um, makes all the colors um, yeah, be, be closer <laughs> than they were on the actual ball of yarn that I used. I used 100 Farbspiele who's, um, I think, the German yarn manufacturer who first came up with this um, sort of knotting together of strands of yarn to get those color gradients. And I just love her color sense. As I say, you can't really tell it on this one as much. But basically what the pattern tells you to do is you knit with this yarn and then you start with one pattern. And then when you notice a color change, you change the pattern. So every time I change the pattern, there was a color change in the yarn and um, she gives a certain number of patterns that you can use. I think I stuck to the pattern for the first two patterns and then um, I chose different um, knit pearl patterns. This is one uh, lace pattern in the middle of the shawl and then it's just a huge big triangle. I think the colors, is, colors are more visible if I hold it like this, actually. Anyway, that's the shawl. And then the, um, the pullover I'm wearing, the jumper, is the verse sweater out of the book Geek Knits. And it's a very simple rounded yoke sweater that you knit from the top down. I use different mohair silk yarns. So this bit is the main color. I held it double in this part. In the beginning of the pullover, I held it double with a glitter yarn. I think they were both by Rowan. Was it Rowan? I don't remember. Anyway, but the lower part, I held it double with another yarn that has some glitter in it. But it's a darker color and that glitter yarn I used to knit a another shawl. So I like to wear that shawl with um, this pullover. But today I chose to... Um, wear these two together and that's not usually a combination that I would pick um, yeah like that but the reason I picked those two is um, because of my knitted uh, crocheted uh, skorts or split skirt or whatever you might call it and I thought that both the colors of the shawl and the pullover um, really went well with um, these shorts um, or this skirt or skirt or whatever so that's why I chose to combine them. And yeah, I'm really happy with the way my new trousers or whatever fit. This is the lace pattern that's in the lower bit of the trousers. Um, I think it's, yeah, I think you can see it quite nicely. So they did grow a little bit in blocking. So they they go like beneath my knee now. I put some elastic in the in the waistband and it's very comfortable it's nice and warm and I'm really really happy with how they came out and I'm especially happy that they're finally done <laughs> um, the project on my uh, on Ravelry is still on my private pro um, Ravelry page that I used to have before I had the shop so um, it's linked underneath the video in case you want to check but I looked and I started this project on November 3rd, 2015. <laughs> so this project has been six years in the making and I'm really happy that it's done now. Yeah, so that's everything 
I'm wearing today, except for the socks that I never show. <laughs> but that's okay. On to finished objects. And this week I have three finished objects. And I'll start with the oldest of those projects. And that's the Madeleine socks. The last um, sock madness pattern that was part of the um, competition. Um, that was the second to last round. And I finally, finally finished them. I um, didn't make it to this round. So it was the round before that I sort of dropped out. Um, so I wasn't in the competition when I started them. I took my time. Um, I think it's a beautiful pattern. It's an all over color work pattern that never, ever repeats. So it's always something different. And um, you knit an afterthought heel. I finished both the heels and the pattern goes right into the toe and um, yeah really really happy that I got them finished and I wanted to show you the inside of the sock because I think it's quite interesting to see all the um, yarn that I had to how do you say that in English but um, this is the unused yarn that sort of runs on the back of the sock on the inside of the sock and in the pattern, the designer says you um, can use the letter back method. Um, with that method, you cast on more stitches than you need. You always purl those stitches and then you purl them in the color that you're not using um, in the foreground. So if there's a row with lots and lots of brown stitches, then you could knit that purl stitch with the green yarn and it would sort of... Um, Make sure that the yarn doesn't flop around or something. You don't have to um, twist your, your yarns. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to knit even more stitches than were called for in this sock. So I decided to just have the floats and to um, sort of cross the yarn. Like um, I think this is, a, this is where I sort of trapped the float with the brown yarn because there was lots and lots of green. You can see there's lots and lots of green um, on the inside because I think there's basically there's more brown uh, on the outside of the sock so you have more green on the inside but you also see some of the brown wherever there's a leaf or something. Um, yeah and what you can also see it's sort of double thickness because you're always using two yarns. Um, these are really nice and warm and um, I hope that my cousin will be really happy with these and will be able to wear them for a long time. And I'm really happy that they fit her. Um, yeah, because they do not fit me. <laughs> yeah, but just wanted to show you what that looks like and um, the way the floats can also help to keep you warm. And as you can see, the, the, the beginning of the sock, you start just with the brown, then you purl around and then you start the pattern and then you flip it over and I think we knit it together. You can, with a, um, a thing like that, you can sew it on later or you can just, um, wait, once you have the same number of rows, the second time you can flip it over and you can knit them together. You knit one stitch that you're working with one cast on stitch together and then this is attached without having to do any sewing. Yeah, so that's my first finished object, another it feels like it took a long time. I think I started sometime in June, but compared to this um, skirt shorts that I'm wearing, <laughs> it's it's nothing. <laughs> so that's okay. Yeah, so that's the first finished object. Then the second, I think, is the Tubularity by Martina Beam. And that's finished too. So I cast it off last week. I've already washed it didn't actually block it. I just laid it out flat to dry and um, yeah, so the edge is a bit more straight now. Otherwise, there's no difference really uh, in what how it looks. So it's like a little shawl if you wear it like this or you can put your head through and wear it like a big cowl. And um, there's this buttonhole here at the end of the of the loop but I haven't put any buttons yet 
um, my sister made buttons that she gave to me that I planned on using for this cowl, but I can't find them. I put them somewhere safe and now I can't find them. But to give you an idea what they look like, um, and maybe I will even ask my sister if I can use these. <laughs> I got three new buttons that she's made. I'm not too sure that um, having ceramic buttons is the perfect idea for something knit. Maybe they are too heavy, I don't know, but I just need to try and sew them on to see if it works. Maybe what I'll do, I ask my sister if I can use these buttons. I can sew them on, I can see whether they are too heavy or not, whether they pull on the yarn too much. And probably once I've sewn them on, I'll find the other ones. <laughs> that might happen. So the ones that I pick now is um, so white one with a kind of flower sort of embossed into the um, clay. And then there's one with hats. And then she put the dark glaze just into the hats. And then there's one. This is the glaze that um, she used for the buttons that she gave to me. But she used less of the, of the glaze on them. So they're basically, it's more like this one. So it's a white or off-white button uh, with, with the dark glaze, I think, inside the star. I think the others had stars because I love stars. So um, maybe... I will use those three and then sew them on different spots on the cowl and then um, you can button the whole thing. I will try and wear this as my what I'm wearing next week and then hopefully it will have some of the some buttons on them and then I can show you how to how this is uh, being worn um, or the different ways you can wear this that's what I'm trying to say. One last word about the yarn. This is Woldacke, a German hand dyer. They did the first one, two, three, four colors. Um, those were minis. I think they all were minis. No, probably not this one. I think those three colors were minis in the advent calendar I had last year. And those three colors are by um, Drachenwolle. And that's, these are leftover yarns from a pullover that I knit. Um, and I think... I will probably wear that pullover, even though it's short sleeve. I'll put, I'll wear something long sleeved underneath, and then I might wear this pullover and then wear this um, loop with it. That's the plan for next week then. So that was finished object number two, and then finished object number three. It's not as old and it's fairly small, and it's the mitts by Stephanie Lockbin. Um, out of her book Knit Happy with Self-Striping Yarn. Um, I knit these to give to my cousin and then she can choose whether she wants to keep them or whether she wants to um, keep the next pair that I'm planning on knitting um, because she already has a pair of mitts exactly in this pattern but with a different color and um, I'm planning another pair of mittens with this color but um, combined with some, some neons. So they'll be colorful and bright. And I know my cousin likes colorful and bright, but um, I also know she loves the mittens that I knit in that uh, pattern. So um, I'll see how she what she decides. So she can keep one of the pairs for herself and then she can give the other pair to a friend of hers who asked for um, some mittens like these. That was um, Opal rainforest um, color in the DK weight or in the six, six ply <laughs> weight um, yeah and they knit up fairly quickly and it, I think it's an ingenious pattern and I just love, love knitting these and someday I will knit a pair for myself <laughs> yeah so that's all the finished objects um, for today then on to works in progress um, I am um, I have three pairs of socks on the needles, two of which you know. The first pair um, that I'm showing you, the oldest now, I think I haven't woven in the ends yet. The others I just hid in here. Um, these are her socks from my sock couple using the Opal Memories yarn in this bright color. I finished sock number one, started on sock number two. Um, really have to get a move on with these because I want to send them off so that they arrive in time for Christmas. And as with his socks, uh, with his socks it was more or less accidental, but this, uh, with this pair it's very intentional that I started off with uh, one of the colors 
that repeats every other stripe. And, um, and then with the second one, I started with the same stripe so that these blue and gray stripes will line up, but the background color is opposite. So this is basically this part of the yarn. And then it's always the, the dark background here will be the light background here and vice versa. So, um, yeah, just love knitting this yarn. Uh, it's just, yeah, I just love knitting from stripe to stripe. One more stripe and I love the way the color changes and I think it's a beautiful sock and I hardly ever knit socks without pattern and I'm really happy I chose to do that with these ones. Um, but now I have to hurry up a bit. The other, the next pair of socks I also have to hurry. I think I have to hurry with all the socks I'm knitting at the moment. Sounds a bit like stress, so not too much stress. <laughs> That's the Zakuri Remix Socks by Yuka. So the um, designer is called Yuka. Uh, she's Japanese and I am, I was allowed to test knit this pattern for her. It's, the, it's a toe-up sock with a rib and a cable pattern. You, um, in the pattern there will be a choice of just knitting the ribs without... Um, a cable you can do one cable on either sock um, the whole way or you can knit two cables on both socks just on the side of the sock so that's um, I think it's a nice choice and you buy one pattern and you get three different uh, options and then of course you can mix and match the way you like but this is the the version that I chose to do um, with the one cable going from the toe up to the top of the sock. Uh, I finished sock number one. I was supposed to finish it by last Saturday. I think I finished it on Thursday, something like that. So it's well within the time frame. And um, yeah, it fits perfectly. The table that she gives for you to calculate when to start the increases works beautifully. So really happy with these socks. Um, and I've started the second one. By the way, this is 8-ply opal sock yarn and it's the yarn that I use to crochet a cardigan for myself. So these socks will match my cardigan and I can't wait to wear them together. So this is the second sock and as you can see, the cable is on the other side. Um, so basically this is the left sock and this will be on the outside of the foot and this is the right sock and the cable runs on this side and also the cable turns the other way so that goes this way and that goes that way i think these are nice little touches that um make it interesting and i just realize that the yarn is all lines up almost perfectly it's not intentional it's not quite perfect because this is lighter than this so i thought um it was at a different place in the in the yarn, but I didn't really pay attention. I just picked up the second um, leftover yarn that I had and started knitting. So they're almost, they almost line up, but that's okay too. So that's the Zakuri Remix socks. Um, I'll let you know when the pattern is available. Uh, I think um, she's going to wait for the test phase to be over. And then at some point she'll publish the pattern. I'll let you know, because it's really beautiful. And you can also tell that the pattern has been released because then the link on my Ravelry page is going to go live and then you can um, find the pattern by going through my project page. Okay, I had three finished objects today, so I was allowed to start new projects and I only started in two. So I was I'm making up for last week. I think I cast on one too many last week. So I'm fine with two new cast ons today and one of them is a sock. So um, that's what I'm going to show you now, but I'm also going to show you the yarn because I got new yarn by Hansa Farm, this German company um, who sell alpaca yarn and also some, some other yarns, but their main focus is on alpaca yarn. And this is another spiral sock made from alpaca. But last time I was doing the um, spiral socks with a pure alpaca, that's not really um, meant to be knit for socks. It's their alpaca DK 
but they're just so soft and nice and for bed socks I thought it was fine to use it but now they've come out with their new sock yarn and that's also so soft and it's um but I think it's a bit more sturdy than the pure alpaca but um so that's why I wanted to try it try it out so this is the baby alpaca socks and it uses the alpacare yarn which is their machine washable alpaca yarn so it's 75 percent of the washable alpaca yarn and 25 percent polyam mid which makes it more durable and better suited for socks and i ordered four of the colors there are some more colors available but i just i wanted to start with some of the colors so that's the black, the charcoal, light gray, and the dark blue. There's also a lighter blue, a green, and I think a gray green, and also white, and maybe a beige or brown color, I don't remember. But you can check it out on their website. Um, and it's, as I said, it's so soft. And they worked on this yarn for quite some time because they were trying to make a yarn that had the same yardage as normal sock yarn made out of sheep wool and also have the same gauge and they had a sock yarn before made of alpaca but it was just slightly thinner than other sock yarn so you had a bit of a different gauge and to manage having the same yardage and the same gauge they had to make the balls a bit heavier and that's why this is 56 grams of yarn um, it's just because alpaca is such a different um, fiber from from a sheep wool so um it's not not something that you can tell by by holding it or looking at it and uh, but it means i could mix it with normal sock yarn and they would knit up to the same gauge it means you can use the same patterns that you use for the traditional sock yarn but with these i chose to hold the yarn double so it's like an eight ply or some would say dk or maybe worsted i don't know <laughs> anyway um i wanted to hold it double so it's thick and warm um socks it's again a pair of socks for my grandmother-in-law uh she's really happy with the first pair i knit for her and so that she has something to um to wear while one the other pair is getting washed i decided to make another pair and i want to hurry up with these because i also want to give them to her for christmas um because it's um with the dk weight yarn with the proper dk weight apaka yarn i use 60 stitches for her so that they're really nice and wide um but i think this is a bit bigger so i chose to use 50 stitches and therefore i'm not knit i'm not doing a knit three purl three pattern but i'm doing a knit three purl two pattern so that means that the outside and the inside look a bit different but I think both sides are quite nice and um, if you were to like fold it, fold the cuff down, it wouldn't matter if, if the inside showed because it's also nice. It's just a bit different. Yeah, so this is sock number one. I really want to finish them by Christmas. So um, if I can't show them to you next week as a finished object, I probably won't show them as a finished object because um, I do want to leave them with her uh, for Christmas. So maybe I'll finish them. But even if I just finish one uh, until the next video, you know what the other sock is going to look like. So that's fine. So that was that. Then I continued knitting on the gnomes by Sarah Shearer. She designs gnomes all day long, I think. <laughs> and she just uh, she's at, um, at the moment publishing her eighth mystery gnome. And I've knit all her mystery gnomes, so of course I had to take part in this uh, mystery knit along. And this time I'm actually knitting two gnomes. And um, I'm going to show the pieces now in case you're not up to date with the knitting. I'm not, by the way. But if you don't want to look, look away now and um, I'll show what I have so far. So as I told you last week, I'm using a sock weight yarn for the first um, gnome. And these were the pieces... I showed you last week oops and this is what I have knit since and don't ask me what it is I have no idea um, those two sort of go together in color this is um, well, 
how that looks together. And then the next piece that I started knitting is this. And this is the brightest of all the colours. And I haven't finished yet. I didn't have the time to finish the clue. So there'll be something very in interesting happening here. Won't go into detail right now. Yeah, but this is what this version looks like at the moment. <laughs> and the other version looks like this. So those were two of the things I showed you last week. This is this huge counterpart to the other unknown thing and this is <laughs> what I've done so far this is not finished as I said um, with the pink I've already added uh, a few road rounds with this I haven't yet so this is going to grow quite a bit bigger so maybe like this I don't know yet um, yeah so this is what I've done I um, so I'm working on one of the clues on the little one that I haven't done here. And I think there's at least one or two clues that I haven't even looked at yet. There was no clue yesterday. Yesterday was a bit of the story that I haven't read yet. Um, but maybe today the next clue will come out. So I will have to try and, uh, yeah, get a move on with that. So uh, I'm not late to everything. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not showing anything anymore in case you looked away. That were the gnomes. And now I'm showing you the second new cast on that I cast on. And again, as with the socks, I mean, I wanted to have another pair of socks, but I also wanted to try the new yarn. And new yarn was uh, what prompted the next project. And that's another yarn by Hansa Farm that they've developed and come out with a few months ago. And that's called Baby Alpaca Brushed. So it kind of looks like mohair. It's not quite as thin as, as mohair, but it has this same hairy, ultra soft quality. Um, this is a 50 gram bowl that runs 225 meters. And I just had to try it. I love mohair, so I'm wearing lots of mohair at the moment. Um, but this is perfect for people who can't wear mohair. I know that a lot of people are either allergic to mohair or irritated by mohair. So for them, this might be a really good alternative. I know that some people are allergic to alpaca, but I don't think a lot of people. So these are some of the colors that they've come out with in their brushed alpaca. Didn't order all of the colors, and I've already sold a few, but these are just some of their colors. And I just oh, I love the colors, the way they look together. If you hold this together with white, it's a very Christmassy combination. Already sold all the white that I had ordered, so I can't show it to you. Um, yeah, but these are the colors that I still have here at the moment. And I can't wait to cast on a pullover or a jacket or a dress um, or a shawl. I have so many things I want to knit with this. But um, to get started, I decided to do something small so I could finish quickly so that people could touch it and, and see what it looks like and feels like knit up. And what I decided to do is out of this book, uh, this is the German version Lace Stricken, but the English title I think is Lacy Knits by Alison Crowther Smith. And I picked this pair of wrist warmers and they are in the book then knit um, out of a thin wool yarn held together with a mohair silk yarn and I decided to use a um, one strand of alpaca silk yarn that's another yarn by Hansa Farm that I've shown you before and I hold that together with the alpaca brushed and I thought as there is a bit of a difference in the colors that I would get a bit of that mild effect but I don't really because they just um, flow together so nicely that you can hardly tell that it's two colors and it has this very easy lace motif that's more or less invisible but that's what mohair or this brushed alpaca will do it sort of softens everything a bit but I think maybe you can tell a little bit so it starts off with some ribbing and then there's this um, lace pattern yeah, and I really 
love working with it. This is a fairly tight gauge. I would not normally use a tight gauge with yarn like this, but I think for the wrist warmers, this will be um, the right thing to do. But I can't wait to knit something with big needles and just to see how the yarn sort of fluffs up. And um, the next thing I'm going to knit out of that yarn will definitely use bigger needles than this. But just to show it off and just to get a feel for it and just, yeah, and to see what, how the combination works up, I'm just really happy with this project. So that were the two new cast-ons and the two new yarns that I wanted to show you. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, by the way, I did not knit on the Dubai socks. I did not continue knitting on the frog and I did not knit on my cardigan. So my cardigan and my socks is there, not presents um, and not a test knit and not a mystery knit along. So they're sort of not as important. I might uh, leave them until after Christmas or maybe just continue a little bit on them. But right now with Christmas and test knits and mysteries, I just have to knit a new yarn. <laughs> There's just other things that are more important at the moment. The next project is the um, wizard's hat that I'm knitting for my son. Uh, I did not do a lot of work on it, um, but, um, or rather I did put a bit of work, but because the number of stitches is increasing so much at the moment, it takes a rather quite a long time to finish around. But I think you can, you can already tell that this is going to be the brim. So, um, so like this is the hat. And then here things start growing outward and I'm really excited to see how this grows and if I find a way for the brim to sort of stay up and not flop into my son's face. <laughs> yeah, so not a lot to see, but um, I did work on it a fair bit. Then the next project is another project that I put quite some work in but again you can't really see a lot that's my skirt with this big snowflake pattern um, but I think last week I had finished this bit and I was a bit below that and now you can see that those those white fields that are sort of repeating down here they're quite visible now um, I think after I finish this round, there's five more pattern rounds. Um, so it's not too much, but every round takes quite a bit of time. So I'll see how far I get this week. And once I finish the pattern, I will probably do a few more rounds of just plain knitting. And then I will do some sort of ribbing so it doesn't roll. Um, so there's still still some work to do, but I'm... I, Looking forward to finishing that a lot. And then we come to the knit-alongs. And um, I'm saying knit-alongs in the plural again because I'm planning the next small knit-along. Um, I had thought of not doing anything for the rest of the year and just finish the blanket. But talking to some friends, um, I mentioned that I I've wanted to cast on the Volkig, a pattern by um, Martina Beam for ages and I've had the yarn for ages and then one of my friends said why don't you do a little knit along and we can um, join in and there's some, somebody else I think was planning to knit another Volkig and um, so I said yeah let's do a, just a very quick and small little knit along for this little pattern. Um, it it's a free pattern on Ravelry, so you don't have to buy it. But if you happen to have the book um, Strick mich Originale, it's, I think it's Strick mich Originals, the English version. It's in that book as well. And it's it's a little cowl like this. Or if you stretch it, it looks like this. And it has these um, ruffled stockinette parts with, with the smaller uh, reverse stockinette bits. And I've always wanted to knit it out of this yarn. This is um, Angora yarn that I bought from a German hand dyer. They have their own rabbits and uh, they really treat their animals very well. They just comb them. They don't have to be, you don't have to cut the hair off. I think you just comb them and the hair comes off. 
and then they spin the yarn and they dye the yarn and it's a mix of dark blues and dark greens and a bit of purple in it and I've always wanted to knit the Volkig out of this yarn so now I'm saying this week I'm going to cast this on I'll have a tiny little knit along everybody who wants can knit along with this pattern and then there'll be something new sometime in the next year so that's the plan and the other knit along my blanket I have started sewing pieces together so as you will remember I always knit nine of these squares together and then start at the next piece and these are the first two squares that I've sewn together so this here is a seam and I'm quite happy with how this worked out because I think you can't really tell the difference between the seam and the way uh, the places where I knit things together so I'm quite happy with that and um, I didn't manage to finish all the th all three little seams before I then have to do two long seams but I've started on the next two pieces and um, so I've started sewing things together here so these two pieces are already attached but then this is where I stopped sewing so I managed to do that but here you can see things are not attached yet and I'm using these clips that you I think they're meant to be used for sewing which I'm doing um, they're not uh, I think when when they sell them they they don't um say it's for knitting it's not a knitting utensil or whatever but I think they work perfectly for for knits because um with the needles if you hold things together they tend to fall out and these are really quite tight and I love using them when I sew knits together so that works really nicely and as you can see I've almost done half of this seam not quite in the middle, almost in the middle of that square. So half done, the other half still needs to be done. And then there's two more pieces that I have to join together. Then I have three pieces and then there's two long seams. And then my blanket will be done. Yeah, so took a long time today. I'm sorry about the long video, but um, it's probably also the new yarn and everything, whatever. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though it was long. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.